degenerate cases of conic sections. I already spoke about the degenerate cases of conic sections in passing, okay, when I introduced the conic sections. So the conic sections such as the parabola, ellipse, circle, and hyperbola, they come as a result of the intersection of two surfaces, okay? One surface is a plane. You can look at it as a paper. And the other is a surface formed by a cone with two naps. Their intersection can be either a parabola, an ellipse, a circle, or a hyperbola. But there are degenerate cases. And that can happen in three ways. For example, your intersecting plane might cut the cone right there at the joint. In which case, the intersection is going to be a point. Your plane might intersect the cone cheek to cheek. Okay, so it's like one surface is resting, it's just resting on the surface of another, and their intersection is going to be a line. Or or the the cone that is standing up, or well, let's say so imagine the cone to be resting on a table, and your cutting plane intersects it perpendicularly and cuts it right there or meets the cone right there at the point of uh, at the joint between the two cones. And what you will form here are two intersecting lines, okay? So these are the three degenerate cases of your conic sections. We have a point, a line, and two intersecting lines. So I lifted this up from my first slides on the topic of conic sections. So there's another way of looking at a, at a line being a degenerate case of a parabola. You know what? There is, there is something about our parabola that tells us whether well, the parabola is narrow or wide. Okay? Or it's too wide or it's too narrow or it's too thin or it can be too fat. Okay? So our parabola can be very fat. So it's like the mouth is wider. Okay, This one is a parabola which has an even wider opening. Or your parabola can be too wide. Okay, It's too wide. It is almost or came to be almost like a line. And so that is one way to look at a parabola. A, or that is one way to look at the line. It is a degenerate case of a parabola. It is easier to see why a point might be a degenerate case of a circle. So this one, for example, is a circle whose radius is 3. Okay, so let us shorten the radius. Let us make it even shorter. Now what happens when the radius is so short? Okay, it is so short it is 0. And so what you will have here is the center of the circle. The circle and the center became the same. And so what you have here is the point. So the point is a degenerate case of a circle. This one is a hyperbola. One branch faces to the left and one branch faces to the right. Now what if their vertices come close to each other? What if they become even closer to each other? What if the vertices are so close to each other, the center of the hyperbola and the vertices intersect at one point or, or they coincide uh, with each other? And what you have here is going to be this, the intersection of two lines. And these two lines are in fact the oblique asymptotes of your hyperbola. So in general... Our uh, equation, uh, uh, second degree equations, will produce the conic sections, okay? This is the general form. But in our course, we paid attention to conic sections where this term is equal to zero. So this equation will give us conic sections whose principal axis is either vertical or horizontal. 
But when this term, okay, the term involving the product of x and y, if that is not zero, what you will have here is a conic section whose principal axis is oblique, like this one. Okay, so pay attention to that term, okay? It's not equal to zero. Degenerate cases and their equations. So these are the standard equations for our parabola. Now, how might a degenerate case arise from the standard equation of your parabola? Okay, so it's something like this. If you if you were to to expand the binomial, okay, expand the binomial, combine similar terms, and along the way, this is what you see. Then what you have here is an equation of a line. Okay, so it's like the terms containing x squared and y squared disappear. Then you are looking at the degenerate case of a parabola, which is a line. These are the standard equations for a circle and ellipse. The degenerate case will arise when the equations appear this way. Okay, Instead of these terms being equal to 1 or equal to r squared, they become equal to 0. And these terms are equal to zero only when, when, when h is equal to x, okay, or, or when x is equal to h, and when y is equal to k. So these two equations are going to be true only when x is equal to h and when y is equal to k, in which case what you have here is simply the coordinates of a point. These are the standard equations for a hyperbola. In the same way, the standard equation for a hyperbola will yield a degenerate case when something like this happens. Instead of these terms being equal to being equal to 1, they are equal to 0. Okay? And that can happen when this is true. And taking the square roots of both uh, terms of your equation, this is what you will get. Now pay attention to this. I hope that you can recognize that these are equations of a line that is in slope. Okay, that is the slope. Slope point form. Okay, when you are given the slope of a line and the line passes through uh, the point with coordinates uh, hk, this is how you write their equation. So those equations are the equations of a line in slope point form. Let us sketch the graph of this equation. Now from the looks of it, from the looks of it, uh, it just seems that this will give us an ellipse. Okay, so look at that. The operation between the quadratic terms is addition, and their coefficients are not equal. And so it just seems that this ought to give us an ellipse. Now what shall we do next? Well, let us write it in there, in its standard form. Okay? I will not show you any more the details. It's completing the square. And so writing this in standard form, this is what we will get. Okay, we divide both sides of your equation by 12, and this is what you will get. It is equal to 0. And that can only happen when x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 1. Okay, so this is the set of coordinates for a point, and the coordinates are 2 and 1. This is an example of a degenerate case of an ellipse. How about this one? So from the looks of it, this ought to give us a hyperbola because the operation between the quadratic terms is subtraction. So from the looks of it, this ought to give us a hyperbola, but just, just the same, just the same with, uh, with this example, it is possible that it will give us a degenerate case. 
Let us write this in standard form. Let us divide this by 4. So this is a degenerate case of a hyperbola which gives us two intersecting lines. And these are their equations. So you don't memorize how to produce the, the equations for your two intersecting lines. When you come here, when you arrive here, all you have to do is just separate the terms. Write this term or transpose this term to the, op to the other side and then get the square roots and it becomes this. Y minus 3 is equal to plus or minus 1 half. Okay, 1 half came from the square root of 1 fourth. Okay, so 1 half times x minus 1. And this is the graph of those two intersecting lines. Okay, this one is the graph of the line y minus 3 is equal to 1 half times x minus 1. And the other line is the graph of this equation y minus 3 is equal to negative 1 half times x minus 1.